give me a too good to turn down payoff offer, you're not getting another penny out of me. Welcome to the show from sunny California, Ann. Hi, Max. So tell us exactly how the Solar Revolt got started, Ann, and uh, what's been the response so far? What inspired it? Well, I got my credit card statement in late summer of 2009 uh, and shockingly found that the interest rate had been raised from 12.99% to 29.99%. I was pretty upset. I didn't know why this had happened because um, I hadn't missed any payments or anything like that. So I did a little research online. I called the bank. Um, they absolutely refused to lower my rate unless uh, they said the only way they would consider it would be if I were working with a credit counseling service. Um, but I told them I don't need credit counseling. I'm not having a problem with my budget or paying my bills. So uh, they refused, and I wasn't quite sure what to do after that. I've talked to some of my YouTube friends and um, they said, you know what, you want to make a video about it. So that's what I did. What do you think of this Washington Post editorial that declares ordinary Americans have no power over the big banks, Anne? Well, I think they underestimate the uh, anger of the American people right now and I think that's one of the reasons that my video went viral and took off and resonated with so many people was that suddenly people began to see a way that we could fight back against the big banks that are just destroying our country. Okay, now the Huffington Post in the U.S. has started a campaign, I would, I would think inspired in large part by your work. The campaign is called Move Your Money. It's about moving money out of the big banks, the four big banks in particular, to smaller community banks, thus decapitalizing these banks thus giving them less of an opportunity to manufacture these mepin, weapons of mass financial destruction, as Warren Buffett calls them. What do you think of this Move Your Money campaign? I think it's awesome, Max. In fact, I've been in contact with them um, to collaborate and have links on each other's websites. Uh, it's one of the things that I call for in my debtor's revolt plan. And um, when I come out with my sort of upgraded version, which I'm calling a tax revolt, although very little of it will have to do with the IRS. But part of that is going to be a complete boycott of all the major banks and Wall Street financial institutions. So you think that uh, this uh, debtor's revolt, uh, your, your thought is it's got the economies of scale. It can make a dent in the financial terrorism that we see on Wall Street. What has been the response from Bank of America? Have you gotten much word from them? Um, they have not contacted me except the one time when um, the video had went viral. It had been out for about 10 days, and I finally got a call from Jeff Crawford, who is the uh, senior vice president of existing credit card accounts. He didn't really want to discuss the video. He was only interested in negotiating my rate back down, which we did. And um, other than that, I have not heard one word from them. Your video touched a, a nerve, and there's anger in the U.S. There seems to be a lot of anger in the U.S., and it seems like that anger now is being pointed at the banking establishment. So less of these campaigns that are really the anti-war campaigns or other, other populist campaigns, they, they all seem to be fusing together into one major campaign pointed at the crooks on Wall Street. Do you get that sense? I absolutely do, Max. In fact, you know, I'm one of the people that's angry. And when I put my video out, I had an overwhelming response. I've had thousands and thousands of people write me, not just from all over America, but from other countries in the world as well. So, uh, you know, because our governments are kind of all doing the same thing, usurping the wealth out of the civilian population. And we've had enough, and we're not going to take it. Okay, now, of course, the... The, the banking institutions that use your deposits as the collateral to spin derivatives that are used to confiscate wealth and increase the wealth and income gap in America and to increase the warmongering in, uh, that America uh, imposes on countries around the world. That, of course, that is tied to the U.S. dollar. So have you considered the possibility that the next step after uh, the 
attack on Bank of America and the Move Your Money campaign would be to get America and the rest of the world to move out of the U.S. dollar, because the U.S. dollar funds much of America's bloody foreign policies and occupations. Yeah, well, that's just the thing, Max, is, uh, you know, we the people, our movement, um, we've got to learn how to fight as dirty as the banks do. You have to fight fire with fire. So I think that, you know, we're going to figure that out as we go. And um, they're going to be quite surprised, I think, uh, once this ball really gets rolling. Now, what do you say to people that, uh, the bankers, who might argue that, well, if you put us out of business, which is the goal, and it's a good goal because, of course, if you, you're fighting terrorists, you want to shut them down. What do you say when they, their response is, well, we're going to have to cut jobs? Well, we've been through hard times before, and we'll get through that. Um, what we the people need to do is finish the job that the free market was trying to do over a year ago, which, uh, you know, if the government hadn't have stuck their nose in it and spent all our money, those banks that ripped everybody off would have collapsed. And yes, it would have been inconvenient. Yes, it would have been a panic for a while. Um, but we would have gotten through it. The banks that had been responsible would have been able to start picking up the slack and we would have rebuilt a new system. Okay, so going back a year, two years, uh, the, what you're prescribing would have been just to let the banks fail and pick up the pieces from there. And so the whole idea of bailing out the banks with all that taxpayer money, you don't see that as having been a good idea. Is Obama responsible for that? I mean, it, it happened during the transition between Bush and Obama. But how much responsibility should Obama take for having engaged in that faulty policy of uh, ba bailing out the banks instead of allowing them to fail, as you would expect in a capitalist society? I think they're both guilty, and I think they're both implicit in this co-conspiracy. You know, co and, uh, in fact, all the presidents going back four decades have really sold out the American people with a series of disastrous poli policy decisions. Okay, policy decisions. I guess you're referring back to deregulation and uh, 2004 when Greenspan changed the uh, debt to capital ratio for banks from, from 12 to 1 to 30 to 1, the elimination of Glass-Steagall and these other deregulatory moves that have basically given the Wall Street bankers free reign to commit their financial terrorism. Is that a fair statement? Yes. When Nixon closed the uh, gold window and turned us into a fiat currency, that was uh, probably the first major hit right there. Um, of course, Carter's policies were disastrous and created all kinds of inflation. Um, NAFTA, under Bill Clinton, has been an absolute unmitigated disaster for the working class in this country. And um, so all, all of these presidents all have a part in where we're at right now. Right. NAFTA, of course, has uh, really been shockingly uh, disadvantageous for uh, the American workforce and the American economy as you've got like meat packers up in the Midwest bringing in Mexicans under the radar to work for nothing while at the same time you've got mercenaries working the border killing Mexicans for another bonus payout. So they're working both sides, uh, these mercenaries all working and of course those mercenaries have to get paid and since they are too chicken to impose the draft they're asking people like you Anne to subsidize their financial and terrorism and their wars. And uh, so you're talking about Nixon closing the gold window back in 1971, uh, and this brings back this whole idea of the dollar and, and interestingly enough, gold. You know, gold by some, including Ron Paul in America, is seen as the salvation, as seeing a return to the gold standard might be a way to get this economy back towards some level of accountability. Have you put this into your mix, into your thinking, the possibility of your hundreds of thousands of, of followers to start buying gold bullion as a way to defeat the banks? Yes, absolutely, Max. In fact, that's one of the things that uh, is going to be going up on my new improved website is the principle of sound money, sound principles, being able, you know, government not spending more than it takes in, and having a currency that doesn't inflate. Well, how angry are you, Anne? Are you angry like, you know, Ben Franklin and the founders of the American uh, experience, Are you willing to put your life on the line angry, or are you just agitated angry? 
No, I am angry, angry, and willing to do whatever it takes to fight these guys because they're monsters, they've destroyed our nation, and the American people have to fight back. And uh, since things aren't really quite like they were 200 years ago, I mean, it's not like we can march down to the town square with our muskets. Uh, so we're going to use the Internet as our weapon. Now, a part and parcel with that strategy, of course, is that you need to, the Internet to be neutral, as it's called, and the, the uh, policy of net neutrality, which allows for equal access to the Internet, is in place. But, of course, the, the forces that you're fighting against, including the banks, are tr arguing that the net needs to be closed down in a series of toll booths put in by the media oligarchs like News Corp, et cetera. Is net neutrality also an issue that you see as part of your campaign? Well, I would hope so, and um, I would think that if uh, they start to restrict things uh, on the Internet in this country, if they start with this fairness doctrine or anything like that, um, we may be marching on Washington.